Thank you for joining me for Section 3.1, Systems of Measurement of Workplace and Apprenticeship, Math 10. In understanding different systems of measurement, the first important point that we need to look at is that there are two systems of measurement, and they have different units in each. Without doing math, we can't go back and forth between the two. The first system of, me of me measurement is the standard one around the world. It is called the Système International de Unité. We call it SI for short. It's called SI for short, but another term that's used for it is the metric system. And this is because one of its main units, one of its main base units, is the meter. The other form of <coughs> measurement, the other system of measurement, is called the imperial system. It's called the imperial system. The important thing about the two systems of measurement is that they have different base units. The base unit is the one unit that all other uh, measurements are based on. They're either one part of that unit or they're multiples of that unit. In the metric system, we have, <coughs> sorry, the SI system, we have a liter when we're measuring fluids, and we have meter when we're measuring length. Over in the imperial system of measurement, when we're measuring fluids, we're going to be measuring by the pint. And when we're measuring length, how long something is, we're going to measure by the foot. And everything else that we measure is going to be in reference to these base units. One important difference about the base units is that they behave differently in each of the systems. To, def to convert one unit of measurement from another in the SI system on this side, we are always going to have a factor of 10. So we're always going to be multiplying or dividing by some multiple of 10. And what this means is everything in SI is going to be a decimal. In the imperial method of measurement, the imperial system, the one thing to remember is that it will always be different conversion factors. What this means is it will never be just 10 or just any other number, but sometimes we'll be multiplying or dividing by 3, sometimes by 12, sometimes even by 1760. Let's look at an example. The SI measurement, which as I said is an international standard, always uses for its measurement of length a meter. But when we get to the point where we're looking at 1,000 meters, eventually it kind of gets a little onerous. So what we do is we use a prefix called kilo, and a kilometer is the same as 1,000 meters. Notice that 1,000 here is a factor of 10. It's 10 times 10 times 10 makes 1,000. So when I'm using a meter, of course, that's my standard, that's my base unit, and it is the same as one meter. Now if I want to go smaller than a meter, the, the most common measurement is a centimeter. And to get a centimeter, each centimeter is going to be 0 0.01 meter. Again, using multiples of 10, this time we've divided by 100 to get 0 0.01 meter. So it's one hundredth of a meter is a centimeter. And 100, of course, is 10 times 10. So again, it's a factor of 10. 
When we look at the imperial system, we have a very different situation here. One long measurement of length is a mile. But a mile has a specific conversion factor. If I'm going to try to go from a mile and measure how many yards it is, one mile is the same as 1760 yards. It's not a nice even multiple, it's just that number. 1760 yards. If I want to go smaller and I want to measure something smaller, I need to know that one yard equals three feet. Again, there's no connection between 1760 and 3. You just need to know that one mile is 1760, 1760 yards, and one yard is 3 feet. And if I'm measuring something even smaller, I need to know that one foot can be divided into 12 inches. And if I want to go further than that, I need to take uh, an inch and break it into fractions, such as three quarters of an inch, seven eighths of an inch, one half of an inch. As you can see, both systems measure fluids and length, but they measure them in very different ways. Or they are, uh, they work together in very different ways. System International is very often used in government, in laboratory situations, when precise measurements and easy uh, mathematical equations are important. Imperial is not an official measure, well, it's not uh, an officially endorsed measure system of measurement, but imperial is still used very often in situations of practical application, such as building, construction, cooking, and also personal measurement, as in when I measure how tall or how much I weigh, how tall I am or how much I weigh, I'm more likely to use imperial. To work with systems of measurement, you need to know conversion factors. The most important mathematical work that we do with systems of measurement has to do with conversion factors. A conversion factor is a number by which you need to multiply a measurement in one unit, in one kind of unit, to convert it into another kind of unit. And conversion factors will be different depending on what you're trying to do. But the basic process is very, sim is very simple. For example, let's say that I had two feet of rope. I would need to multiply it by a conversion factor in order to find out how many inches of rope I had. Another example, let's say I uh, knew that I ran 400 meters because I ran all the way around a track. But let's say I did it every day for 10 days. I'd like to know, through a conversion factor, how many kilometers have I run in those 10 days. So it's really this point here, this conversion factor, that is going to help you move from one unit to another unit, whether you're working in SI or Imperial. And later on, in 3.2, we will even have a conversion factor for co going from imperial to metric, and from, sorry, SI to imperial. In SI, I said that all of the conversion factors are going to be multiples of 10. So if I have 1,000 meters, that's going to equal one kilometer. The conversion, uh, if I have 100 centimeters, I know that that's going to equal one meter. Because I know these two things are equal, 
1,000 meters and one kilometer, and 100 centimeters is equal to one meter, I can create a fraction. So the fraction I'm going to create is going to help me convert these things, such as 400 meters to this many kilometers. The, because it, this equals this, I know that if I have one kilometer and I have it over, and I divide it by 1,000 meters, I know that these are going to cancel out and this is going to equal one. Because anything that is one thing Oh, divided by another thing is going to, that is equivalent is going to equal 1. So that means that if I multiply 1 kilometer over 1,000 meters, I won't be changing the value of the measurement. I won't be changing the measurement. I will just be converting, converting it into another measurement. So if I were to use one kilometer and 1,000 meters here, uh, let's say I'm going to take my example here. Let's say I had 400 meters. I would multiply it by my conversion factor, which is one kilometer over 1,000 meters, and that would be equivalent, don't mind the mess, to 400 meters times one kilometer over 1,000 meters. Because uh, anything over itself in a fraction cancels out, one meter cancels out on both top and bottom. Then I have 400 divided by 1,000. If I go to my calculator, I know that that is 0 0.4. And then what I have left is this kilometer, and I know that it is 0. That 400 meters is the equivalent of 0 0.4 kilometers. Follow it again. One, 400 meters is the same distance as 0 0.4 kilometers. I'm just using a kilometer to measure it instead of a meter, instead of many meters. The conversion factor for centimeters and meter would be if I had, uh, if I knew I was 280 centimeters, I would need to write one meter over 100 centimeters. CM, short for centimeter. So, whoop. <clears throat> let's say I took my height of 280 centimeters I multiply it by this, one meter over 100 centimeters, because they are equivalent, equal one, so I'm not changing the measurement. Now I have 280 over 100, because the centimeter would be on top and it would cancel out. We cancel out the centimeter and cancel out the centimeter, and so we have 280 over 100 meters, and that equals 2.8 meters. So if my height is 280 centimeters, my height is also 2.8 meters. Things get a little tricky with imperial conversion factors. The only thing that we know about all of these is that in imperial conversion factors are always different. So let's take a look at some of the factors here. Let's say I want to um, figure out how to express um, my height in inches. How I, if, let's say I want to convert that into feet. What I have to do for that is I have to know that one foot equals 12 inches. Because of that, I know that 12 inches over 1 foot equals 1, so I can use this as my conversion factor. Uh, but the other thing that I can do is I can have 1 foot 
over 12 inches, and this could be my other conversion factor. Beyond that, I also know that one yard equals three feet, so my conversion factor might be three feet over one yard, which equals one, oh, and that also equals one yard over three feet. Finally, our longest one is one mile. Our longest unit of measurement that we're going to be using commonly is one mile, and that is 1,760 yards. Okay, so to, in order to, with this equation, I do know that one mile over 1,760 yards equals one. And 1,760 yards over one mile also equals one. How am I going to use this? Mrs. Herrick, dial 7559. Mrs. Herrick, 7559. Let's say that I know that I am 60 inches tall. In order to get that into feet, I need to know a conversion factor. So I'm going to take my conversion factor over here, which is one foot over 12 inches. I'm going to multiply one foot over 12 inches, and I'm going to get 60 over 12, but the unit that I'm going to have is that here is inches on this side, which will cancel out the inches underneath the fraction, and I will have 60 over 12 feet. And if I calculate that, that's going to be the same as 5. Let's say I have um, 20 yards between my house and my friend's house, and I want to run an extension cord. How many feet of extension cord do I need to have in order to run it from 20 yards? Well, I'm going to take this conversion factor, three feet for every one yard, and it's going to tell me that 20 times 3 equals 60 feet.